let me ask you a question. What are you doing? Tonight, when you go home, test yourself. Take out a sheet of paper and take a pen, a pencil. And write up at the top of the page, 1982. And write down, what did you do in the year of 1982 to restore a constitutional republic, limited government, or restraints by law? What did you do to rebuild our free enterprise system to actively remove the shackles? I don't mean that you had a job. And I don't mean that you registered to vote and voted. I assume you did those. I do not mean that you paid your parking tickets. I assume you did those. But what did you do to actively restore these values that our grandparents, great-grandparents, forefathers worked to give us that we take for granted? That has made America such a wonderful place to grow up in. Most of us, if we're honest, if we're really honest, we wind up with a blank sheet of page. Now I ask yourself, are you really satisfied with a blank sheet of page? With the American society being destroyed economically where your children will live in slavery just to pay your debts? Children of Rome, incidentally, wound up being taxed over 100% taxation. Some families sold their children in slavery just to pay the taxes. To give you an idea of how serious it became. And I'm not so sure that we're so far behind in the enormous burden that we're handing our bright young graduates today say, Merry Christmas, get a job, work hard, because you're going to pay the debts for the bills, for the monies that we have spent long ago. Lenin died in 1924, and before he died, he laid down a program for conquest of first taking Eastern Europe, second the masses of Asia, and third the encirclement of the last bastion of capitalism. We will not have to attack, he said. It will fall like an overripe fruit into our hands. Paraphrase and summarize, that was his plan. We've seen Castro coming to Cuba in a Soviet bastion 90 miles from our shores as a result of our State Department policies and our news media. We've seen an armed takeover and a Castroization taking place tonight on the island of Grenada. Through our government, make no mistake, through our government and our news media, we have now have a Soviet Cuban bastion in Central America and Nicaragua. The threats to expand to El Salvador, if El Salvador falls, Honduras will fall shortly after that. And we could see a solid red Central America up to the Rio Grande within three to four years. Just to give you a little measure of comparison, our national resources were strapped to the brink by handling 125,000 refugees from Cuba recently. How do you think it's going to be to handle 15 to 20 million people walking across the border with Mexico that is an over 2,000 mile border? Are you honestly prepared to machine gun down families, mothers and fathers carrying their children, with priests carrying their religious relics in front of them as they walk across? This is the prospect you face. If you think Mexico is any bastion of strength, you're not, uh, you not, haven't been in the 20th century. You've certainly not done your homework. It is a rotten egg that's ready to be crushed, frankly, from within. It's a sad story, but it's a long story. Let me urge you to get involved and ask you, if you haven't been involved, what will it take? Do you have to wait until your child comes back from college twisted as a young hippie Marxist because of some smart Marxist professor that able to grab hold of the young brain and twist it like putty because they did not learn fundamentals in their home society, in their own high school? Do you have to wait until you lose a son in a no-win conflict as in Korea or Vietnam? before you decide that you're involved. You have to wait until you lose your job due to inflation or government-caused inflation or high interest rates. You have to wait until you realize that your church is taking your offering money to support terrorist activities abroad, to burn missionaries and to burn uh, down missions. To some Americans, I think they will have to face some personal catastrophe before they're willing to face up to the fact that they are involved. I would urge you tonight... Remember that organization is the key. From my own perspective, as your representative, as one who's active in a lot of areas, I would urge you to get active at your local level. Get active in an organization. Let's say I'm on the national boards of those I met listed and many others, but I strongly recommend at the local level, it's not a Democrat, it's not a Republican, it's not a political area, 
to get active in the local chapters of the John Birch Society because, in my opinion, it's the best way that honorable citizens, Catholic, Protestant, Jew, young, old, black, or white, can join together in a movement that does not endorse politicians, does not endorse parties, does not contribute to politicians or parties, but is working to build a renewed appreciation of the values of limited government, free enterprise, and biblical morality. We're here tonight facing this threat and the crisis that is upon us. But we're here still in the land of liberty because in 1776, during that period of the initial phase of that first transition, 56 men came together in Philadelphia signing a declaration of independence, pledging their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Despite a tremendous threat, in spite of some of them having their children stripped from them, being tortured and killed, families scattered, in spite of vast fortunes thrown to the winds and signers dying in poverty, unable to pay their debts, you know, not a single one of the 56 welched on that signature and pledge. In 1983, you have a much greater challenge than they do, in a much greater crisis. But you also have much more wherewithal more time, more freedom, more leisure, more substance to put into the fight. I hope each and every one of you are willing to pledge just a portion of your time, a portion of your substance, but renew that pledge of your sacred honor so that your children and your grandchildren will be able to look back to this time and know that members of their family responded to the challenge. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.